I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three. Good morning and welcome to our worship today. Today is the day that we remember those who have gone before us in the Christian faith. November the 1st is All Saints Day, and on the Sunday that is uh, usually right after that, we remember those whom God has brought to their heavenly rest already. And why do we do that? Because their lives, whether they lived through things that we might think of as lives of relative ease and simplicity, or whether they lived through real struggle and turmoil, their lives were brought home to their heavenly rest. They were brought home to their heavenly rest. God cared for them in their lives, and He will remain faithful to you and to me in and through all things as well. So we remember God's faithfulness to those who have gone before us to their heavenly rest, and then we take courage as those who yet live by faith and not by sight here and now. Welcome to our worship today. We'll follow the service as projected. There are a few printed copies at the back of the sanctuary, sanctuary if you have difficulty reading the screens. Our first hymn this morning is for all the saints. We will sing the first portion of it now and the next portion of it very shortly. Would you please stand as we sing?
We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the psalmist we say, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Again, the psalmist writes, turn from evil and do good. Confess your sins to God in repentant faith, trusting only in his mercy for the sake of Jesus. Almighty God, we confess that we are sinners, sinful from birth, and that our sinful condition separates us from you. We have sinned against you in our selfish thoughts, our unkind and insensitive words, our hurtful actions, and our failure to act to help others. We have failed to honor your name. We have not of ourselves been merciful or humble or pure in heart. We have not thanked you for the blessed life you give us. Forgive our sins through Jesus and enable us to serve you forever. Rejoice and be glad. For Jesus' sake, God has taken away your sin and you are forgiven. He has declared us holy and made us his saints. He has declared us holy. Therefore, I announce the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. We continue in song. We gather to hear our Lord's word on this day. We prepare hearts and minds by speaking together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have graciously joined us together as the body of Christ. We thank you for the witness of all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. Grant us courage to follow your faithful people of old. Preserve us in the one true faith that, together with all your own, we may sing your praises in heaven. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
We read, first of all, today from the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, the faithfulness of God is highlighted for us, for the blood of the Lamb covers over all our sin. The scripture reads, Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four wind, or rather to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. From the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell face down on their, or rather, they fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in the world, they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we read from the book of Revelation, it's so important to understand the context of the first hearers of that message. The persecution that really came uh, hard and fast under Nero was now in full swing. If you confessed Christ as your savior, you very likely would be put to death, thrown to the lions, burned alive. That's where the practice of godparents came from, from that era. If you had children and you were a Christian, you did not know if you would be there to care for them tomorrow. So you arranged for godparents who would look after them if and when you were taken. To people who are living under that kind of persecution, God sent a message through John, the book of Revelation, a message, message of confidence and hope. The 12,000 from every tribe simply indicates that all the believers are there. They understood that. We need to understand it too. All those who have washed their robes and made them in white in the blood of the Lamb are there. All those who are covered in Christ are there. They are accounted for. None is forgotten. When life is difficult and hard, and we've experienced some pretty unusual things over the last year and a half, not to that degree that they faced, but we've experienced unusual and unsettling things, remember that you are accounted for too. Nothing changes the faithfulness of God. And we read of that again in 1 John chapter 3, our second reading for the day. When Christ returns, we shall be revealed as we truly are, people now who live forever because of him. The scripture reads, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, that is, when he returns, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, for our children's message time today, for those watching at home, for those here as well, I want you to think about how strange family gatherings have been over the last year and a half. You know, there's times where you couldn't get together with anybody, right? And maybe some of you did anyway, maybe some didn't, but there's been real restrictions and, and the way we normally do things just hasn't happened. So have you missed those big gatherings? I think most of us have. 
Have you missed being able to get together around a table and just relax and have fun and not worry about anything? I think most of us have. It's been a strange and an unsettling time. And the part of the Bible that I read from and explained a bit about already today was written to people who are living in a strange and unsettling time too, where if you said, yes, I believe in Jesus, you might be put in prison or you might be killed. You'd lose your business for sure. Things would happen that were not very pleasant. And they needed to hear that God knew and that he is faithful. And that's what we're remembering today. We're remembering how faithful God is, that he doesn't change like anything else we experience in this world. Can you think of anything else in your life that has never changed? Things tend to change a lot, don't they? Maybe the love of your mom or your dad, it's always there and rock solid, and I hope and pray it is. But even they have their bad days too, don't they? When maybe they get upset about something that another day might not bother them that much. God's not like that. God never changes. And in his faithfulness, he got those people who were suffering because they believed in Jesus' home to heaven with him. And he is going to look after you and me too. When I said a few minutes ago that everyone who trusts in him is accounted for, that includes you. You were sealed with his promise when you were baptized. You were washed with the water of rebirth and God made a promise to you there. And he doesn't go back on his word. He doesn't go back on his promises. So no matter how unsettling things have been, you know, they're a little bit more normal now than they were, but they're still not back to where they were, and I don't know what new normal will look like. No matter what happens, though, God's promise doesn't change. It's always the same. It's always there. It never wavers. And that's what we're remembering as we remember those he's brought home to heaven already today. He's going to get us there, too. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to this earth to win our salvation. We thank you that you never change. We pray that you would help us to trust in you day by day by day until that time we see you face to face and you have us with you where we will live forever too. We thank you for the, the, those who have gone before us, who have taught us about you. We thank you that you've got them safely to heaven and we pray that you'd help us remember you'll get us there too. We ask it in your own name. Amen. Our worship continues as we join in song.
we turn our attention to our Savior's words as recorded in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel in honor of our Lord Jesus. I invite you to stand as we hear. The scripture reads, Now when he, that is Jesus, saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join in confessing our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We join in singing brothers and sisters in Christ, remembering those who have gone before us in Christian faith and remembering our place in God's creation here and now.
Today, as we gather around God's Word, I'd like to draw your attention back to our reading from Matthew chapter 5. And it's so important as we read these words that we often call the Beatitudes, to recognize to whom they were spoken. Jesus did not speak them to people in general. He spoke them to his disciples, to those who trusted in him. He didn't speak them to say, here is what you do to be blessed. He said, you are blessed already. This is your state of being, even in the midst of struggle. And so we read once again, now when he, Jesus, saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Gospel of our Lord. Well, let's be honest, life brings its challenges, doesn't it? We all know that. It brings challenges, tragedy, and grief. And at times, those things can seem like they're just too much for us to bear. Sometimes the brokenness of this world, the pressure, the loss, will, will literally make your knees buckle and your heart break and your spirit crumble. So how do you handle times like those, hard times? How do you and I handle such hard times? Maybe you're going through some of them right now. Is financial pressure making you dizzy? Is loneliness sending you into despair? Is grief taking your heart captive? Are you dealing with chronic pain or illness or just struggling because every day seems so hard and you can't even put your finger on why? Hard times, heartbreaking times, scary times. They can lead you to ask God some serious questions. Where are you, Lord? What happened to your love? Have you forgotten about me? Why aren't you showing mercy to my loved ones? Why is this happening? So let me be very clear about something. It's okay to ask those questions. The Bible speaks absolutely clearing on the, clearly rather on this. It's okay to wrestle with God. In fact, God wants you to come to Him with your deepest struggles. Remember the man named Jacob in the Old Testament? He wrestled with God as he faced his greatest fear and the possible loss of his own life and the life of his family. The Bible pulls no punches as it tells us the account of this desperate man hanging on to God and not letting go until he could know God's blessing. Another person in the Bible, the Apostle Paul, begged God to relieve him of what he called a thorn in his flesh a condition that just tormented him relentlessly and it drained hope out of his life. He thought, I could serve you so much better if this weren't part of my life, Lord. But the hope of the Bible is not rooted in commiserating about the fact that we all might face hard times. No, God wants you to have a way to handle them, to deal with hard times, even to overcome them. Psalm 34 speaks true and comforting words. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He saves the crushed in spirit. It's about faith in an unchanging God who loves you. About confidence in the unchanging one who holds you in his arms and his hand now who says, I've engraved you on the palm of my hand and who guarantees your eternal future. The Bible says, put your hope in the one who reveals himself as your savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the preacher of the Sermon on the Mount that we read from today, he reminds us that God is not your enemy. Sin and death are your enemies. He's not your tormentor. The broken world impacted by sin and even our own sinful nature inside of us, that's our tormentor. So God's not bothered when you ask him for help. He's never too busy. He's your savior. He is present to hear you and to help you. Trouble may not disappear. But your Savior lives, and He will see you through to eternal life with Him. We need strength to deal with hard things in our life. And that's where our world leads us astray. The world will tell you to handle things with your toughness, with your self-made smarts or strength. Sometimes that might help for a while, but it never lasts. And then some will say, adjust your attitude, think positive thoughts, and that can help for a while. But can it endure through unspeakable pain? Or, or here's a very common one, a common way of dealing with overwhelming hard times. The world says, seek some diversion when you're down. Some escape to life. Lose yourself in something that numbs the pain. The world tells you to dumb down your feelings of despair, maybe by lashing out at other people or pointing the finger of blame somewhere else or seeking some temporary satisfaction in something that makes you feel good for a minute or two or a day or two. But what do you do when you come back to reality? For hard times, for real things, the world offers temporary solutions for eternal problems. 
And that keeps, tra- rather, that just heaps tragedy upon tragedy. Is there a better way? One that works forever? Yeah, there is for sure. It's the life of living in a relationship of faith with a real Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus invites you to put your trust in Him. And here's the key. Put your trust in Him in all things. Not just when you think you can't do it alone. Do it always. Seek His face in everything. That's why He talked about those who are continually hungering and thirsting after righteousness, after God and and the way that He made us to be. Continually doing that, those are the people who are fulfilled, filled up, satisfied. It's not a part-time thing to be a believer in Christ any more than it can be, well, can you be a part-time husband or wife? That doesn't work out very well, does it? You're in a relationship that demands everything and in which you give everything. And, and that's what our faith is like too. It's something that impacts all of our life. But when we live in that relationship of faith with a real Savior who came in real history, in real time, and really died and rose again for you and me, then today you can take heart because then you have real help in that Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, the Apostle Paul was a man who understood suffering and pain. To say that his life was not easy would be an incredible understatement. But in facing hard times, even facing, facing death itself, he could declare, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, he's invested himself in you and me, in other words. How will he not also with him, by his grace and mercy that do not change, graciously give us all things? Can Jesus really help me? If you really want an answer to that, The Bible invites you to look at the cross and remember what happened there. Remember what Jesus did. In real time, He carried the weight of your sin and mine. He faced the depth of all of our pain. And then the one who carried the eternal consequence of my life's record and yours, He rose again. That's right. Jesus conquered death. Is there anything too much for Jesus who walks with you now? That's why Paul continued in Romans 8, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing can. Nothing in heaven or earth can separate us from the love of Christ. In all these things, whatever it is we're struggling with, in his or whether with his thorn in the flesh, with your struggle and hardship now, by living with him, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's the free offer that you are given in Jesus. Even when you are laid low through the worst of times, You are more than a conqueror in Him. That is what you can trust and believe when life seems to be crumbling all around you and you no longer live under the illusion that you are in control of things. We're not, are we? No matter what you're facing in your life right now, trusting in Christ, His eternal life will always have the last word for you in Him. In Christ, there will always be a way through. How does that work? Well, again, if there's no way out, God's abiding strength and presence will empower you to get through. You may not have a way out of your hard times right now. Hurt and pain wound you in serious and deeply hurtful ways, but Jesus will give you a way through. That's what he was saying to his followers in Matthew 5. Jesus spoke startling words, especially for people who are facing hard times. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who recognize they've got a need. I don't want the screen on my forehead thinking and feeling all the time, but God sees that. So I've got a need before Him. Blessed are those who mourn, who mourn the fact that we are not what our Creator made us to be. Blessed are the meek. That's not weak. Meekness is power under control. It's used in the right ways at the right times. Blessed are those who keep hungering and thirsting for who God is, for righteousness. Blessed are you even when people revile you, persecute you, say all kinds of evil things because of Jesus. Rejoice and be glad. The world opposed him. It will oppose you too. They persecuted the prophets who were before you. You can expect some of the same. Did you hear Jesus mention the realities of life that you face from day to day? Jesus spoke to people who were bent over in adversity with lives in pain, with with hurts that drained them dry. Jesus spoke to people who were burdened with sadness and grief, and for all of those hard times, for all of those real things, for all those difficulties that literally take our breath away, Jesus had one phrase of encouragement. He said, 
I'm there with you in the midst of it. I'm going to keep strengthening you in the midst of it. You are blessed right now. You, in your pain. You, as you pay the price for injustice. You, as you feel weak and weary. You, as you wonder if there can be any hope and happiness. Jesus said that in Him, because of Him, because of the kingdom of God and how real it is, you are blessed even now. Now hang on for a moment. Stick with me. Don't tune me out yet. Jesus wasn't saying that everything is okay. He wasn't saying that the hard times are good for you. He wasn't lacking compassion or treating your difficulties as though they were nothing. The word blessed has a very special meaning. It means that God has not abandoned you. It means that God is close. And even in these hard things, He's doing His work in your life. Why doesn't God just get rid of all sin right now? Why doesn't He get rid of all the hard things right now? Because He'd have to get rid of you and me as well. Sin runs so deeply through every single one of us. So the word blessed doesn't simply mean you're showered with what you would perceive as good things. It means that God is at work for you no matter what is happening in your life. You are not on your own. He is working things together for the good of those who love Him. So keep seeking His face. The moments you are experiencing right now are not the whole story. You are blessed. Back in Jesus' day, people who were afflicted or suffering, they were often considered to be people cast aside by God. If hard things hit, the first question was, what did they do or what did a family member do wrong to get them in such trouble with God? And people still think that way a lot of the time, don't they? Well, Jesus is here to, to blow up that misguided thinking. The broken and the outcast were not forsaken by God. On the contrary, those are people who are brought the closest for comfort and help. The psalmist writes, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. You see, it is during your worst times when you recognize reality that you do not control everything. I do not control everything. It's then that you need to know that there is one who stands with you no matter what. And in Him you're blessed. God is with you. He is at work for you. You are not forsaken. Remember, in Christ, you do not fight for victory. You fight from victory. It is during the most painful times that you need to be certain about the fact that you have a Savior who understands your pain. He Himself endured physical suffering of being beaten and crucified. He carried the crushing weight, the crushing spiritual blow of being separated from God the Father when He took my sin and yours to the cross. It's during those times when you feel like your life is lost that you need to know the truth that your Savior Jesus overcame death the greatest obstacle ever, and even death itself will not win in your life. In fact, Jesus can boldly say to all who trust in Him, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. You have eternal hope, and what you're experiencing now, that's a blip on the timeline of eternity. No matter what this life hands you, you have eternal hope through Christ your Savior. Your hard times, they might be resolved this side of heaven, or they might not. I pray that they are. I pray that you experience healing, help, and wholeness of heart. I do. I pray that you can praise God for His merciful help that you see in His life. But, but one day, we will all face death. And for that inevitable hard time, and all the ones that happen leading up to that day, you are offered an eternal hope right now, everlasting help right now in the midst of whatever you're experiencing. Why? Because God is still at work for you. Even in the struggles, even in death itself, He draws close and He gives you the gift of His eternal life through His Son. You are blessed. Even now, He remains with you. Even now, He provides strength and encouragement. You are blessed. Last Monday, November 1st, was All Saints Day. It's a day when, as I've said already, our loved ones who've died in the faith are remembered. We give thanks to God that He was faithful to them. And there might be tears as we remember on that kind of a day. If it's a Sunday and we're gathered in worship, in some churches the names of loved ones who've passed away during the last year are read aloud. Grief is remembered and grief is acknowledged. Sadness might be brought to the surface again. But more than that, that day recalls the home in heaven that our faith-filled loved ones enjoy already and reminds us of our eternal hope that even if we are sad, we are blessed by the helping and saving work of Jesus. In an article titled, Where Was God on 
author Philip Yancey recounted the tragic events of that horrific day in New York. The shock, the loss, the grief that gripped much of the Western world. Yet even on that day, he said, God made himself known through strangers helping strangers, through people who drove miles across the country to bring help and supplies, through first responders, many who sacrificed their own lives, through acts of kindness and through churches and organizations like the Red Cross and even the sanitation workers for Christ. Did you know there was a group with that name? God was present through them. A cross appeared in the rubble. Prayer services were held throughout the day. Rescue workers combed the wreckage around the clock some working 40 or more hours in a row to provide help. This was not ordinary. This was God's presence in the middle of tragedy. This was the real definition of blessing. When times are hardest, God promises to be present. With faith in that unchanging God who sent his son as savior, you are blessed even in hard times. With faith, you can face the hard times, even begin to move through real fear and struggle. Why? Because today, tomorrow, each and every day, God, your Savior, your Lord, is right there with you. You are blessed amidst your mourning, in your fear, in your worry, and in your tears. You are blessed in the loss and in gain. You are blessed in victory and in pain. You are blessed because God loves you and He doesn't change. He cares about you and even in the middle of hard things that rage around you, He's there to help. God is real. He's present. And the clearest testimony of that for you is seeing the real presence of God in the Word who took on human flesh, Jesus, your Savior. The one who went to the cross on Good Friday and rose again that first Easter that we would have new life in Him. When hard times hit, lean on the Lord's Word. He can speak and bring life to your hurting soul, especially then. Draw near to Him and He will draw near to you. That's His promise in the Bible. Today, Jesus gives you the straight scoop on life, no matter what you're facing right now. In Him, because of Him, you are eternally blessed. God is real. He's active. He's with you. He is strong, and He loves you too much to ever abandon you. That's the reality Jesus brought to the troubled crowds in Matthew 5. That's the reality He longs to bring to you day by day. Let His Word renew your heart and mind each and every day, and you will see better you will see the world through his eyes better. You will see better his presence with you. With faith in him, be hopeful, prayerful, watchful, because your Savior says to you, with me, you are blessed. And as you and I live that way, the peace of God that passes human understanding, empowering us through God's word and spirit, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ your Savior. Amen. Our worship continues today as both Nancy and Paige lead us in music.
Our worship continues as we come before God's throne of grace and prayer in honor of our Lord God. I invite you to stand as we do so. We pray, Almighty and eternal God, of whom and through whom and to whom are all things, we join our voices with the chorus of those angels and those who have gone before us in the faith assembled around your throne in giving you blessing and honor and glory and power. We are not worthy of the least of your blessings, and yet in your mercy you have given us life and then by the blood of Christ, your Son, you have given us new life once again, life that is eternal. You have redeemed us. You have set us apart. You have made your home within us through your Holy Spirit. You have renewed us in your image and continue to work in us by your word day by day. You richly forgive us, Lord. Your spiritual blessings are innumerable, Father. And we are blessed also in physical and material ways. We pray with thanksgiving for our health, for surrounding us with the beauty of your creation, for supplying us with friends and loved ones, for giving us personal gifts and abilities. We praise you for so many things we often take for granted. And we remember those who have particular needs. We continue to pray for, for Howard and Paula in their battle with cancer. We commend them to your gracious care. We ask that you would help them to know your presence day by day. We pray for those who are awaiting surgeries. And we especially remember Donna Evans this week as she prepares for surgery. We pray that you would give to those attending to our needs, or her needs rather, the skill that they need and be able to use their skills to the utmost and grant her healing. We commend before you those whose needs we know and name in our hearts. Lord, teach us to recall your blessings day by day and number them one by one. And hear us now as we pray in Jesus' own name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We join again in song, singing, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Worship draws to a close. We come before the Lord in prayer once again and to receive his blessing. In honor of our Lord God, again, I invite you to stand. We pray, Almighty and merciful God, we have been blessed with your forgiveness and grace. Fill each of us with the desire to honor your name in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, by way of announcements today, I think there are one or two to come forward. Uh, young adults, if you are planning on attending the young adults gathering for study and, and conversation and, and building each other up, that first event will be held at uh, 6.30 tomorrow evening here in the sanctuary. Meet here in the sanctuary, 6.30. Confirmation class, 7 o'clock as usual. Good morning. I have a couple of announcements from the church office. The first is about the Purdy's Christmas chocolate fundraiser. There's been some questions. The direct link to order online is on the church website under events and announcements. If you do not have online access, that's okay. You can hand your order form into the church office with a check made out to Grace Lutheran Church and we will get that order in for you. I know there's been some questions about our order campaign number and they're not in the booklet, so that's the easiest way to order. If you have any questions, you can contact Jacinth Adams, Adam, sorry, her number is on the posters as well as her email address. She's the one facilitating it. The funds are going to Brown Bagging for Kids Calgary. It is a lunch program within the city for children who would not normally be able to have a healthy lunch. The second thing is, Pastor Mark and I have been waiting five months for this week to happen. We are finally getting our internet upgrade this week. Yay! <laughs> 
However, that being said, we do not anticipate it going smoothly. <laughs> so if you are contacting the church office this week, try to do so by phone. Or if you happen to have my personal email address, I will be checking that this week, just in case the church stuff does not go smoothly. But please keep that in your prayers. It would be appreciated. They are supposed to be here tomorrow afternoon, I think, to start the process. Okay, have we missed any other announcements today? God's blessings on your day. We'll catch a, a sample of materials from Right Now Media next. Epicurus, the Greek philosopher, raised this question. Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. If he is both able and willing, then whence cometh evil? While the Bible speaks a lot about evil that one experiences externally from people, society, and nature, the Bible systemically zooms in on the evil within one's own heart. In this series about evil and suffering, we are going to take five sessions to look at crises and calamities through a biblical lens. In a fallen world, suffering seems inevitable. And when trials come our way, there is a tendency to withdraw or to do everything possible to change the circumstance. It is one thing to experience faith when the circumstances are favorable. It's quite another to experience calm in the midst of the storm. Circumstances may change, but our Creator doesn't, and He is dependable. He is perfect. We have a God who is in control of every circumstance. A God who shares our wounds, not because He is weak, but rather because He is strong. Sin, a prime fallenness in this world, is done a deathly blow by the death of a Savior on the cross. And as always, remember, Right Now Media is available free to anyone. You don't have to be a member of the congregation. Click on the link, on our, link, link rather, on our website uh, for, uh, to set up your account. Uh, and there are uh, resources available there on books of the Bible, questions like suffering and evil, relationships, parenting, uh, biblical archaeology, anything you can possibly imagine, uh, all available to you there. I think those are all the announcements for today. Our last song is Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng. Let's stand as we sing.
believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three.